needs to go right to me. Easily offended? Don't watch these flicks. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 politically incorrect movies. For this list, we're looking at movies that subvert cultural norms with their highly controversial material. I gave him like a traditional African what name. So what's the baby's name? OJ. <laughs> While each person can be offended by different things, we're trying to take an objective view and are ranking this list by a film's potential to offend the general population. I could tell you, but that's another tale for another day. This is not based on individual sensibilities, but by what current society would deem most reprehensible. Protesting is not enough. We must take radical action against the fascists in our own country. Bring it down. Bring it all down. Number 10, The Idiots. An idiot de Frenchens Minsk. Lars von Trier breeds controversy. From Antichrist to Nymphomaniac, to his comments at the Cannes Film Festival, this director has been shocking viewers for decades. And The Idiots is no exception. Can't go space. Oh, can't go space. This Danish comedy drama concerns a group of adults pretending they are developmentally disabled. The onsvæg, de kan også godt lige samle nødder i efteråret. Kom her, samle nødder. Considering the actors are not disabled, and appear to be mocking those who are. The film drew many questions about decency upon release. Are there any spasers here? Hold no kift, Nana. Combine that with graphic scenes of unsimulated sex, and you have one of the most objectionable movies ever made. Number nine, South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. The South Park movie is an extension of the crudeness of the show. Pulling no punches and covering all ground, its targets are varied and its subject matter even more so. Wendy and I think that was a sexist statement. Well, I'm sorry, Wendy, but I just don't trust anything that bleeds for five days and doesn't die. Featuring cameos from Satan, Bill Clinton, Saddam Hussein, and even the Baldwin brothers, the animated musical comedy presents audiences with multiple facets of humanity and then systematically destroys them. Eric, did you just say the F word? You? And as proof of censorship as a whole, it delves into meta-territory, as it incorporates its real struggle with the censors into the plot. Parents and Philip will not be released. They are going to be put on trial for corrupting America's youth. We don't know what all the fuss is about. The fuss is about taking our citizens. It's about not censoring our art. Offensiveness abounds, but Matt Stone and Trey Parker mean it to improve society rather than hinder it. Horrific, deplorable violence is okay, as long as people don't say any naughty words. Number eight, The Love Guru. Mariska Hargate, Your Holiness. Oh, Rajneesh. Mariska Hargate. Condemned for being a horrible movie with horrible performances, it's Mike Myers' performance in The Love Guru that really brings the bad acting into sacrilegious territory. Oh! Oh, my Sharif, my ball! As Myers plays a spiritual advisor of the Hindu faith, many viewers objected to the unflattering and outrageous portrayal of the religion and its figures, including some high-ranking Hindu leaders. When I was a child in India, Growing up in the tiny village of Haran Makista, I found a voiceover machine, which I still use to this day. Oh, hi. This is because the love guru relies on tired cliches and stereotypes to entertain audiences, instead of acute and educational observations. Celine, it is my day of lucky! <gasps> and creative laziness can often be mistaken for disparagement. What is holiness staying on qualify as an extension? Hands. Shaket babakasha. Number seven, you only live twice. The girl I have chosen is an agent of mine. But first, you must become Japanese. Early James Bond movies are rife with questionable subject matter, and you only live twice deserves top billing in that category. Why don't you just die the parts that show? <laughs> the main contention with this film is that 007 disguises himself as a Japanese man at one point, and it is an incredibly offensive portrayal. Gombawa. Gombawa. Artificial eyelids were affixed to Sean Connery, 
as well as a jet black toupee and bushy eyebrows. In addition to this transformation, almost every Asian stereotype is exploited in the movie, including ninjas, kimonos, and inexplicably provocative women. Do you think you can make it? Of course. Number six, Soul Man. Congratulations, Mr. Watson, and good luck at Harvard. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Dressing in blackface is one of the most heinous cultural taboos. So imagine an entire movie dedicated to it. Mark, this is crazy. You can't do this. I already did it. Yeah, but Mark, you can't just take a scholarship away from some black person. Behold, Soul Man, which is about a white man who darkens his skin to receive a black-only scholarship at Harvard. Miss Walker. Here. Mr. Watson. Right on. Perhaps the most shocking aspect of this film is that it was released in the 1980s, a supposedly enlightened decade, where one does not expect to find Al Jolson-like performances. Mammy. Mammy. Inappropriate in the 20s, inappropriate in the 80s, and inappropriate now. Just as the reverse, i.e. whiteface, is as well. So, what are you gonna wear? Uh, this? <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Number five, Song of the South. Now you just set yourself down here and listen. With both ears wide open. Everyone knows the song. Right out of it. Zippity dee da. Zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. But most don't know that the character who sings it is a former slave in a Disney film so embarrassing it's been kept out of the public eye. Don't you know you can't run away from trouble? <laughs> well, I'm glad there ain't gonna be no trouble. There ain't no place that far. Uncle Remus is his name, and he's a classic Uncle Tom type character. The film has never been released on video in America due to its allegedly racist views. Well, honey, you sure got yourself in a peck of trouble. But its legend lives on in infamy as one of Disney's biggest cinematic mistakes. Please, please, my Lord, please don't bring me in that property. Uh. Number four, Blazing Saddles. Hey, boys, look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? Along with being one of the greatest comedies in history, Blazing Saddles has been cited time and time again as a movie that could not be made today. What did you expect? Welcome, Sonny. Make yourself at home. Marry my daughter. And the reason could not be clearer. These are people of the land, the common clay of the New West. You know, morons. <laughs> It is an unflinching parody of life in the Old West, complete with N-words, cultural stereotypes, and offensive characters. Qualifications. Stampeding cattle. That's not much of a crime. Through the Vatican. In today's politically correct age, the very mention of such words and subjects draws the ire of social justice warriors everywhere. And even in the context of a satirical comedy, the reputational fallout would be devastating. Oh, you shifty! They said you was hung! And they was right. Number three, Borat. This is Orkin, the town rapist. Naughty, naughty. With its official title being Borat, cultural learnings of America for make-benefit glorious nation of Kazakhstan. The movie's title is as long as the list of people it offends. What is the best gun to defend uh, from a Jew? I would uh, recommend either a 9mm or a 45. Very nice. Borat comes from the mind of Sasha Baron Cohen, who created the substantially offensive films Bruno and The Dictator, but this one beats both and leaves nothing sacred. Are you telling me the man who tried to put a uh, rubber fist in my anus was a uh, homosexual? As he travels through America, the Kazakh reporter Borat, played by Baron Cohen, fraternizes with people from all races and creeds. And it's his feigned ignorance and unfamiliarity with the West that produce hilarious and disastrous results. I think that the cultural differences are 
vast. Exactly. And I think he's a delightful man. Though Jewish and gay people get their fair share of abuse, no one gets it worse than the Kazakhs, whose government stopped the film from being released in the country. Although Kazakhstan a glorious country, it have a problem too. Economic, social, and Jew. Number two, Team America, World Police. The South Park guys are truly the messiahs of offensive content. Fuck, Dirk Dirk Allah. Dirk Dirk Muhammad Jihad. Haka Sherpa Sherpa, Abakala. Oh, Dirk Dirk Dirk. Trey Parker and Matt Stone followed bigger, longer, and uncut with this marionette wielding amalgam of bad taste. Everyone has ace. As gratuitous and vulgar as a movie can be, Team America lampoons American politics, national security, and celebrity culture in extremely unsubtle ways, including a now infamous sex scene that defies description. I can't help it, this just feels so right. This helped earn the film an NC-17 rating for its first nine cuts before it was finally changed to an R. I'm so lonely, so lonely. So lonely and sad, real alone. Simply and aptly put, Team America flashes a middle finger towards proper society. Anybody know of any terrorist attacks coming up soon? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Crime, boy. Indian. People don't tell us all the time what we won't ever do. Won't ever read, won't ever have a job, won't ever learn to tie my own shoes, won't ever have a girlfriend. Well, I've done all of those things. But you can't tie your own shoes. I mean, you never had a girlfriend. Number one, the birth of a nation. When the KKK is considered heroic in a movie, you know you're in for a shock. That is the crux of this silent era epic. The country is saved from villainous African Americans by the benevolent Ku Klux Klan. It makes for an unsettling viewing experience and an abhorrent foray into the cultural mindset of the early 1900s. Despite its problematic themes, D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation is considered groundbreaking for its technical achievements and cinematic grandeur, and is regarded as one of the most important movies ever made. Appreciate the art, but not the ideals. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most politically incorrect movie? Better go lightly! Once again, I must protest! If you don't stop with that pornograph, right this minute I'm going to go to the police department! For more controversial top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs>